Preparation for weighing The major considerations in preparing an aircraft for weighing are discussed below. This includes weigh clean aircraft inside hangar, equipment list, ballast, draining the fuel, oil, other fluids, configuration of the aircraft, checking the aircraft, and leveling the aircraft. Weigh clean aircraft inside hangar. The aircraft should be weighed inside a hangar where wind cannot blow over the surface or cause fluctuating or false scale readings. The aircraft should be cleaned inside and out, with special attention paid to the bilge area to be sure no water or debris is trapped there. And the outside of the aircraft should be as free as possible of all mud and dirt. Equipment List All of the required equipment must be properly installed and there should be no equipment installed that is not included in the equipment list. If such equipment is installed, the weight and balance record must be corrected to indicate it. Ballast All required permanent ballast must be properly secured in place and all temporary ballast must be removed. Training the fuel Train fuel from the tanks in the manner specified by the aircraft manufacturer. If there are no specific instructions, drain the fuel until the fuel quantity cages read empty when the aircraft is in level flight attitude. Any fuel remaining in the system is considered residual or unusable fuel and is part of the aircraft empty weight. If it is not feasible to drain the fuel, the tanks can be topped off to be sure of the quantity they contain, and the aircraft weight with full fuel. After weighing is complete, the weight of the fuel and its moment are subtracted from those of the aircraft as weighted. To correct the empty weight for residual fuel, add its weight and moment. The amount of residual fuel and its arm are normally found in Note 1, in the section of the TCDS, data pertaining to all models. When computing the weight of the fuel, for example a tank full of jet fuel, measure its specific gravity, or SG, with a hydrometer and multiply it by 8.345, the nominal weight of 1 gallon of pure water hose SG, as 1.0. If the ambient temperature is high and the jet fuel in the tank is hot enough for its specific gravity to reach 0.81 rather than its nominal SG of 0.82, the fuel will actually weigh 6.76 pounds per gallon rather than its normal weight of 6.84 pounds per gallon. The standard weight of aviation gasoline is 6 pounds per gallon. Oil The empty weight for aircraft certificated under the car, Part 3 does not include the engine lubricating oil. The oil must either be drained before the aircraft is weighed, or its weight must be subtracted from the scale reading to determine the empty weight. To weigh an aircraft, that does not include the engine lubricating oil as part of the empty weight, place it in level flight attitude, then open the drain valves and allow all of the oil that is able to drain out. Any remaining is undrainable oil and is part of the empty weight. Aircraft certificated under 14 CFR Part 23 and 25 include full oil as part of the empty weight. If it is impractical to drain the oil, the reservoir can be filled to the specified level and the weight of the oil computed at 7.5 pounds per gallon. Then its weight and moment are subtracted from the weight and moment of the aircraft as weight. The amount and arm of the undrainable oil are found in Note 1 of the TCDS, 
and this must be added to the empty weight. Other fluids. The hydraulic fluid reservoir or all other reservoirs containing fluids required for normal operation of the aircraft should be full. Fluids not considered to be part of the empty weight of the aircraft are potable or drinking water, lavatory pre-charged water, and water for injection into the engines. Configuration of the aircraft Consult the aircraft service manual regarding position of the landing gear shock struts and the control surfaces for weighing. When weighing a helicopter, the main rotor must be in its correct position. Jacking the aircraft Aircraft are often weighed by rolling them onto ramps in which load cells are embedded. This eliminates the problems associated with jacking the aircraft off the ground. However, many aircraft are weighed by jacking the aircraft up and then lowering them onto scales or load cells. Extra care must be used when raising an aircraft on jacks for weighing. If the aircraft has spring steel landing gear and it is jacked at the wheel, the landing gear will slide inward as the weight is taken off of the tire, and care must be taken to prevent the jack from tipping over. For some aircraft, stress panels or plates must be installed before they are raised with wing jacks to distribute the weight over the jackpot. Be sure to follow the recommendations of the aircraft manufacturer in detail anytime an aircraft is jacked. When using two wing jacks, take special care to raise them simultaneously, keeping the aircraft so it will not slip off the jacks. As the jacks are raised, keep the safety collar screwed down against the jack cylinder to prevent the aircraft from tilting if one of the jacks should lose hydraulic pressure. Leveling the aircraft When an aircraft is weighed, it must be in its level flight attitude so that all of the components will be at their correct distance from the data. This attitude is determined by information in the DCDS. Some aircraft require a plumb line to be dropped from a specified location so that the point of the weight, the bob hangs directly above an identifiable point. Others specify that the spirit level to be placed across two leveling lugs, often special screws, on the outside of the fuselage. Other aircraft call for a spirit level to be placed on the upper door seal. Lateral level is not specified for all light aircraft but provisions are normally made on helicopters for determining both longitudinal and lateral level. This may be done by built-in leveling indicators or by a plumb bob that shows the conditions of both longitudinal and lateral level. The actual adjustments to level the aircraft using load cells are made with the chops. When weighing from the wheels, Leveling is normally done by adjusting the air pressure in the nose wheel shock strut.